Hello, welcome to Nagaland Educational. In this video, we will discuss on important MCQ questions and answer on modern Indian history with explanation. And all the questions will be very important for your competitive exam. And please subscribe the channel and press the notification icon to get the latest update on this channel. Question number one is, the idea of the constitution of India was given by? Correct answer is, Option number B, M. N. Roy. Here, in explanation, an idea for a constituent assembly was proposed in 1934 by M. N. Roy, a pioneer of the communist movement in India and an advocate of radical democracy. The constitution of India was drafted by the constituent assembly and it was implemented under the cabinet mission plan on 16 May 1946. Question number two, who was the first governor general of Bengal, India during the company rule? Correct answer is option number A, Lord Warren Hastings. Here in explanation, the first governor general of Bengal was Warren Hastings with a tenure of office from 1772 to 1785. Warren Hastings was an English statesman the head of the Supreme Council of Bengal. He brought an end to the dull government system by enforcing the Regulating Act of 1773. Question number three, who was the first Governor General of British India? Correct answer is option number C, Lord William Bentinck. Here in explanation, Charter Act of 1833 made Governor General of Bengal as Governor General of British India, and William Bentinck was the first Governor General of British India. Question number five: The first Supreme Court was established in Calcutta. Who was the first Chief Justice? Correct answer is option number B, Sir Elijah M.P. And question number five, which of the following statements is correct which refers to Beat India Egg 1784? And here the correct answer is option number D, but option A and option B are correct. That is, board was set up to guide and supervise the affairs of the company in India. B, it provided for board of control having six members due from British Council. Here, in explanation, the East Indian Company Act, 1784, also known as a Beat India Act, was an act of the Parliament of Great Britain intended to address the shortcomings of Regulating Act of 1773 by bringing the East Indian Company's rule in India under the control of the British government. Beat Indian Act of 1784 was passed to remove the defects of the Regulating Act of 1773. Differentiated the commercial and political affairs of the company. Thus, it established a system of double seat government in India by Crown in Great Britain and the British East Indian Company. The Governor General was to be under indirect control of the British government through the Board of Control. Question number six East Indian Company monopoly of trade came to an end in India under, the, under which charter act? Correct answer is option number B, Charter Act 1813. Here, in explanation, the Charter Act of 1813 ended the monopoly of East Indian Company in India. However, the monopoly, the company's monopoly in trade with China and trade in tea was remained intact. Question number seven: Who was the last Governor General of British India? Correct answer is option number A, Lord Canning. Here in explanation, Lord Canning was the last Governor General of East Indian Company and became the first Viceroy of India under ground rule after the Queen Victoria proclamation also called Magna Carta of India in 1858. Question number 8, 
who was the last governor general of India after independence? Correct answer is option number C, Chakravati Rajkobalcharya. Here, after independence, Chakravati Rajkobalcharya was chosen to be the last governor general of India in the absence of the Lord Mountbatten. His tenure lasted from June 21 in 1948 to January 26, 1915. He was also made the governor of West Bengal during the time of partition. Question number 9. Which charter egg is also known as the St. Helen egg? Correct answer is option number B. Charter egg 1833. Here, in explanation, the Charter Act of 1833 was passed in the British Parliament which renewed the East Indian Company's charter for another 20 years. This was also called the Government of India Act 1833 or the St. Helen Act 1833. Question number 10. Under which Act the Governor General of Bengal became the Governor General of India? Correct answer is option number A, Charter Act 1833. Here, Governor General of India, 1833 to 58, by Charter Act of 1833, the boss name of Governor General of Bengal again converted into Governor General of India. First Governor General of India was William Bentinck. And question number 11. Under the Charter Act of 1833, the first law commission was constituted under the chairmanship of Correct answer is option number D, Lord Macaulay. Here, the first law commission was established during the British Raj era in 1834 by the, by the Charter Act of 1833. Under the chairmanship of Lord Macaulay, which recommended Quantification of the Benal Court and the Criminal Procedure Court. Thereafter, the second, third, and fourth law commission were constituted in 1853, 1861, 1879, respectively, which, during a span of 50 years, contributed to each enrich the Indian Statute Book with a large variety of legislations on the pattern of the ten prevailing English laws adopted to Indian conditions. Here, Law Commission of India is neither a constitutional body nor a statutory body. It is an executive body established by an order of the Government of India. Its major function is to work for legal reforms. Question number 12. The term British possessions in India was used for the first time under which egg? Correct answer is option number A. Beats India Egg 1784. Here, Beats India Act established the system of adult control of India and these changes continued through 1858. The company's territories in India were called the British Possession in India for the first time. The British government was given complete control over the company's affairs and its administration of in India. Question number 13. Which of the following statements is correct which refers to Charter Act of 1853? And the correct answer is option number D, all of the above. Here, option number A is, for the first time, it introduced the local representation in India Legislative Council. And B, both executive and legislative functions of the Governor General Council were separated for the first time. And C, it introduced the recruitment of civil service to India. Here, the complete explanation of the Charter Act 1853. For the first time, the legislative and executive functions of the Governor General's Council were separated. The second one is, this act served as the foundation of the modern parliamentary form of government. The legislative wing of the Governor General Council acted as the parliament on the model of the British Parliament. It gave a part to the Indian civil service and was open to all including Indians. This ended a system of appointments by the recommendations and started a system of open and fair competition. For the first time, 
local representation was introduced into the Legislative Council in the form of four members from the local governments of Bengal, Bombay, Madras, and Northwestern provinces. Question number 14. The double government system, Board of Directors, and Board of Control was abolished under which act? Correct answer is option number C, Government of India Act, 1858. And here, Government of India Act, 1858, provided that India was to be governed directly and in the name of the Crown. And this act abolished the company rule, abolished the Court of Directors, and abolished the Board of Control. This act abolished the dual government introduced by the Pit India Act. And question number 15. Who started the dual system of government during the company rule in India? Correct answer is option number B, Robert Clive. Here, in, expl in explanation, Robert Clive's dual government system was introduced in 1705 and lasted till 1772. He was the governor of Bengal from 1757 to 1760. Under this system, he divided the administration of the Bengal into Diwani and Nizamat. This was referred to as Clive Dahl system in which the company was the Diwan and the Nawab held the Nizamat. Thus, Dahl system government was abolished by Warren Hastings. Question number 16. Who was the first Viceroy of India? Correct answer is option number A, Lord Ganim. Here, Government of India A, 1858, bus which changed the name of both Governor General of India by Viceroy of India. The Viceroy was appointed directly by the British government. The first Viceroy of India was Lord Ganim. And question number 17, who was the first Secretary of State for India during the British India? Correct answer is option number B, Lord Stanley. And question number 18, the post of the Secretary of State was introduced under the Act of? The correct answer is option number A, Government of India Act, 1858. Here, the Act introduced the post of the Secretary of State and provided the Crown will govern India directly through a Secretary of State for India, who was to ex exercise the powers which were being enjoyed by the Court of Directors and Board of Control. The Office of Secretary of State was vested with complete authority and control over Indian administration, thus he was now the political head of the India. He was also a member of the British cabinet and was responsible ultimately to the British parliament. Thus, Lord Stanley was made first Secretary of State for India. Question number 19. Who introduced the portfolio system in 1859? Correct answer is option number B. Lord Ganning. Here, Lord Ganning was the Governor General and Viceroy at the time introduced, inter, introduced the portfolio system. In this system, each member was assigned a portfolio of a particular department. Lord Ganning nominated three Indians to the Council in 1862, namely the Raj of Banaras, the Maharaja of Bhatiala, and Sir Dinkar Rao. Question number 20. Under which act brought the element representation for the first by allowing discussion of budget during the British India? Correct answer is option number A, India Council Act 1892. Here, this act increased the function of the Legislative Council and gave them the power of discuss, discussing the budget and addressing questions to the executive. Question number 21. Who became the first Indian to join the Viceroy Executive Council? Correct answer is option number D. Satyendra Prasad Sinha. Here, the Indian Council Act 1909 empowered the Governor General to nominate one Indian member to the Executive Council, leading to the appointment of Satyendra Prasad 
Sina is the first Indian member. Question number 22. Which of the following statement is correct, which refers to Indian Council Act 1909, or also called Morley Minto reforms? And here the correct answer is option number D. Both option A and option B are correct. That is, it introduced the Viceroy Executive Council to India, and communal representation was introduced. And here in explanation, the Indian Council Act 1909 was an act of the British Parliament that introduced a few reforms in the legislative councils and increased the involvement of Indians limited in the governance of British India. It was more commonly called the Morley, Morley Minto reforms after the Secretary of State for India, John Morley, and the Viceroy of India, the fourth Earl of Minto. And question number 23, who created the partition of Bengal in 1905? And here the correct answer is option number B, Lord Gonzon. Here, Lord Gonzon had carried out the partition of Bengal in 1905. This led to a massive uprising in Bengal as a result following this, the British authorities understood the need for some reforms in the governance of Indians. And question number 24, who introduced the self-governing system in India during the British India? Correct answer is option number D, Lord Jamsford. Here, the Montagu Jamsford reforms, or more briefly known as the Montfort reforms, were introduced by the colonial government to introduce self governing institutions gradually in the British India. And question number 25. For the first time, direct election was introduced under which act during British India? And here the correct answer is option number A, Government of India Act, 1919. Question number 26. Which of the following statement is correct, which refers to Government of India Act, 1919? And here the correct answer is option number D, all of the above. That is, it introduced the DRG system. Bicameral system was introduced in the central legislature and it provided separate electorate for Sikh, Indian, Christian, Anglo Indian, and European. Here, the Government of India Act 1919 was an act of the British Parliament that sought to increase the participation of Indians in the administration of their country. Diarchy was introduced, that is, there were two classes of administrators, that is, executive councillors and ministers. The second one is a bicameral legis legislator was set up with two houses, Legislative Assembly, forerunner of the Lok Sabha, and the Council of State, forerunner of the Raja Sabha. Question number 27. In which year Simon Commission was constituted? The correct answer is option number D in the year 1927. And here in explanation, the Indian Statutory Commission, also known as Simon Commission, was constituted in 1927. It is a group of seven members of the parliament under the chairmanship of Sir John Simon, later first Viscount Simon. The commission arrived in British India in 1928 to study constitutional reforms in British largest and most impor important position. And question number 28. During the British India, the federal system of court was introduced under the Act of The correct answer is option number B, Government of India Act 1935. Here, the Government of India Act was passed by the British Parliament in August 1935. It was the longest act enacted by the British Parliament at that time and created the federal system of court in India. And question number 29. Which of the following statement is correct, which refers to Government of India Act 1935? And here the correct answer is option number E, all of the above. That means it abolished the directory system of government. And the second one is all India Federation was established. And third, it provided for the establishment of Federal Public Service Commission. And the last one is it provided for the establishment of a Reserve Bank of India. 
Here, in explanation, the Government of India Act was passed by the British Parliament in August 1935. It was the longest act enacted by the British Parliament at that time. This act abolished the system of provincial diarchy and suggested the establishment of diarchy at the center and a federation of India consisting of the provinces of British India and most of the princely states. Question number 30. The dominion status in India constitution was proposed in which year? And here the correct answer is in the year 1942. Here in explanation, in March 1942, the Prime Minister dispatched, dispatched Sir Stafford Cripps, a member of the War Cabinet, to India to discuss the British government's draft declaration. The draft granted India dominion status after the war but otherwise considered few changes to the British Government Act of 1935. And question number 31. The Cabinet Mission Plan was came into force in which year? Correct answer is option number D, 1946. Here in explanation, Cabinet Mission was a high-powered mission sent in February 1946 to India by the Adli government, British Prime Minister. The mission had three British cabinet members, Bentick Lawrence, Stafford Cripps, and A.V. Alexander. The cabinet mission aims was to discuss the transfer of powers from British to Indian leadership. And question number 32, which of the following statements is correct which refers to India Independence Act 1947? And here the correct answer is option number D, all of the above. That is. It abolished the office of the Secretary of State, it declared India as the independent state, and it provided the creation of two constituent assembly for India and Pakistan. And here in explanation, the Indian Independent Act, Independence Act 1947 received the royal assent and entered into a force on 18 July 1947. This act pulled into action the Mount Benton Plan for the independence and partition of Bengal. Sorry, partition of India. And the last question is question number 33. Under which act provided the establishment of the Reserve Bank of India? And here the correct answer is option number B, Government of India Act 1935. So thank you for watching the videos. And if you like the videos and can something from this video, please subscribe the channel and press the notification icon to get latest update on this channel so see you in the next video